بنفسهم عبرة لأولي الألباب ما كان حديثا يفترى ولكن تصديق الذي بين يديه وتفصيل كل شيء وهدى ورحمة لقوم يؤمنون بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف المرسلين سيدنا مولانا محمد عليه وعلى آله أفضل الصلاة وتم التسليم uh, Last episode الحمد لله by the will of Allah we were speaking about uh, the Prophet Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم uh, and a beautiful event in his life, a, a, a very, very uh, beautiful event that took place in the Prophet Muhammad's life, and how he marched with his companions to uh, the city of Mecca after being promised by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that they would enter uh, in a state of peace and they would be uh, entering, inshallah, uh, with their ihrams and they would enter peacefully to perform uh, the pilgrimage and they would enter without any uh, bloodshed or without any war. Now, some of the companions of the Prophet Muhammad were a bit disappointed. Uh, after the signing of the P Treaty of Hudaybiyah because they were uh, expect everything was going for them so they were expecting that they're going to perform Umrah that year they were excited to perform Umrah that year but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had something else in mind for them Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had, had a plan for them Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, his wisdom would be expressed and manifested in the events that would be unfolded so we're going to be reciting inshallah from Surah Al-Anfal uh, we're going to be uh, reciting from Ayah 20 to Ayah 30 inshallah Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يا أيها الذين آمنوا أطيعوا الله ورسوله أطيعوا الله ورسوله ولا تولوا عنه وأنتم تسمعون ولا تكونوا كالذين قالوا سمعنا وهم لا يسمعون إن شر الدواب عند الله الصم البكم الصم البكم الذين لا يعقلون ولو علم الله فيهم خيرا لأسمعهم ولو أسمعهم لتولوا وهم معرضون يا استجيبوا لله وللرسول إذا دعاكم لما يحييكم واعلموا أن الله يحول بين المرء وقلبه واعلموا أن الله يحول بين المرء وقلبه وأنه وأنه إليه تحشرون واتقوا فتنة لا تصيبن الذين ظلموا منكم خاصة واعلموا أن الله شديد العقاب وَاذْكُرُوا إِذْ أَنْتُمْ قَلِيلٌ مُسْتَضْعَفُونَ فِي الْأَرْضِ تَخَافُونَ تَخَافُونَ أَنْ يَتَخَطَّفَكُمُ النَّاسُ فَآوَاكُمْ فَآوَاكُمْ وَأَيَّدَكُمْ بِنَصْرِهِ وَرَزَقَكُمْ مِنَ الطَّيِّبَاتِ لَعَلَّكُمْ تَشْكُرُونَ يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا لَا تَخُونُوا اللَّهِ لَا تَخُونُوا اللَّهِ لَا تَخُونُوا اللَّهَ وَالرَّسُولَ لا تخونوا الله والرسول وتخونوا أماناتكم 
وأنتم تعلمون واعلموا أنما أموالكم وأولادكم فتنة فتنة وأن الله عنده وأن الله عنده أجر عظيم يا أيها الذين آمنوا إن تتقوا الله يجعل لكم إن تتقوا الله يجعل لكم فرقانا ويكفر عنكم سيئاتكم ويغفر لكم والله ذو الفضل العظيم وإذ يمكر بك الذين كفروا ليثبتوك أو يقتلوك أو يخرجوك ويمكرون ويمكر الله ويمكرون ويمكر الله والله خير الماكرين بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم My brother my sister when the prophet Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم was signing the Treaty of Hudaybiyah, the companions were a little bit disturbed. Everything was going for them. They came, they expected that they would be able to uh, enter as the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu was promised by Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala and they expected that this would take place in that year. But Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala had another lesson for them. And that lesson was very, very, very critical. And it was about the importance of sticking to the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and his companions regardless of what happens and regardless of what takes place. Whatever he says that the Prophet Muhammad Sallam, whatever he says, they are to do and they are to implement and to know full heartedly that it's for their own good and it's for the sake of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala and by doing that, the best would eventually unfold. Now, my brother, my sister, imagine Quraysh. When they sat down with the Prophet Muhammad Sallam, Suhail, when he sat down with the Prophet Muhammad Sallam to discuss the treaty and to finish the treaty, uh, they, they were thinking that this would actually be a good thing for them by pushing Muhammad Sallam and his companions away and forbidding them or preventing them from doing Umrah that year they thought they would still uh, you know, preserve their reputation but as a matter of fact the Prophet Muhammad Sallam received the ayat from Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala and the ayat basically told the Prophet Muhammad Sallam that this act of signing the Hudaybiyah was a great opening إِنَّا فَتَحْنَا لَكَ فَتْحًا مُبِينًا لِيَغْفِرَ لَكَ اللَّهُ مَا تَقَدَّمَ مِن ذَنْبِكَ وَمَا تأخر. That Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala was granting the Prophet Muhammad Sallam a clear, open victory. Now, my brother, my sister, there's a general rule that every nation holds and every institution holds, uh, especially a defensive one or a police one or a military one. Uh, you don't negotiate with terrorists. And Quraysh earlier in the episodes, we discussed how they portrayed the Prophet Muhammad Sallam as a terrorist. And yet here they sat with the Prophet Muhammad Sallam and they actually signed the peace treaty or the treaty of Hudaybiyah. And so this was a treaty in which you know, all the, uh, you know, the, 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 the war was put to an end or put to, uh, to hold until Quraysh would break the uh, treaty later on. Uh, not, not intentionally, but nonetheless uh, break the treaty, subhanAllah. But this gave the Prophet Muhammad Sallam such a very, very important and critical opening. Because what happened now, all these tribes uh, from the Ar Arab Arabian Peninsula, uh, they're all thinking to themselves, hold on a second, if the Prophet Muhammad Sallam was really a terrorist, if the mu'mins were the believers with him, or the Muslims were really terrorists as Quraysh described them, then why is Quraysh sitting down and signing a peace treaty with them? And how did the Prophet Muhammad Sallam manage to enter Mecca? And how did he manage to get a treaty like that signed? Because there's a rule, and that rule is you don't negotiate with terrorists. And this gave the uh, tribes, uh, the different Arab tribes, an opportunity to actually go and find out who Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is. So all these different tribes were coming to the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in the city of Medina. And they were inviting the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to send somebody to them that would teach them Islam. They're all interested. What is this Islam? Why, what, is, what is so unique about this? The news of the Muslims is now spreading very quickly. Uh, people want to know how did they defeat the Ahzab? All the coalition that gathered, as we mentioned in the earlier episodes, how did the Muslims defeat them, subhanAllah? And so everybody's now interested in Islam. And when everybody now has access to the pure message of Islam directly from the Prophet Muhammad Sallam's mouth or from the messengers of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam now they're all very 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 excited to actually embrace Islam and Muslims now subhanallah are increasing in huge numbers 
never, never preceded by, you know, this was never seen before in the history of Islam. Such large numbers, subhanAllah, uh, coming, subhanAllah, very, very, very beautifully entering Islam. Many, many tribes now, subhanAllah, are sitting, learning about Islam. They're getting excited and they're embracing Islam. And so this was actually quite an amazing opening for the Prophet Muhammad Sallam and for the believers. Now the ones who were sitting with him in Hudaybiyah, like Umar ibn Khattab, for example, who was excited to perform that pilgrimage that year, would now subhanAllah see that the real opening, the real fatih was not engaging in battle, the real fatih was not getting you know, uh, violent and, and fighting Quraysh, the real subhanAllah opening was right there in that piece of paper that they signed, in the treaty that they signed, because this would subhanAllah allow for a very important footing, a calm era that would allow the Prophet Muhammad's message to be heard clearly. And we learn a very important lesson here. During battle time, during war, uh, people are not, yani, they don't have the time uh, to, to, to really, really have access to knowledge properly. And when there's peace and calm and stability, and when there's, uh, the propaganda is, 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 is uh, disarmed and, and neglected and pushed aside, people now have access to the message in a clearer way. And in Islam comes to cultivate a, a, a state of peace for the people and allow for them to embrace Islam in a state of peace or to consider Islam in a state of peace and we'll come to that inshallah hopefully later on in the episodes the conditions that will be you know required in order for someone subhanallah to 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 uh, to, to, to be given uh, da'wah to and to be given invitation to regarding Islam and so here subhanallah the Muslims are taught something very important the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu was right some people didn't see it when he was signing that treaty. They thought it was, it was uh, you know, some sort of uh, uh, you know, uh, lowering the standards or some sort of compromise that was unnecessary. But the Prophet Muhammad Sallam was of course supported by Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala, And this would be the quickest, fastest SubhanAllah way that would allow for so many people to enter Islam as Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala promised a great opening to the Prophet Muhammad SallAllahu Alaihi Wasallam. Now my brother, my sister, this is very critical. And the ayat that we recited from Surah Al-Anfal talk about this. Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala us, يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا أَطِيعُوا اللَّهَ وَرَسُولَهُ وَلَا تَوَلَّوْا عَنْهُ وَأَنْتُمْ تَسْمَعُونَ O oh, you who believe, O oh, true believers, you say you believe, you say you're a Muslim, obey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and obey His Messenger and never ever shake away, never ever move, don't, don't dis, dismiss the command of the Prophet Muhammad We have so many people living, subhanAllah, in the contemporary time and they would, uh, you know, somehow separate between the Quran and the Sunnah. They would say the Quran, yeah, it's the word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we can take seriously. But the word of Muhammad, oh, it's just a tradition, it's just, they, they don't give the tradition of the Prophet Muhammad Sallam or the Sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad Sallam the right that it deserves. And Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala teaches us, listen and obey to the Prophet Muhammad Sallam, obey the Prophet Muhammad Sallam. وَلَا تَكُونُوا كَالَّذِينَ قَالُوا سَمِعْنَا وَهُمْ لَا يَسْمَعُونَ Don't be like the people who say, yeah we listen to Allah, but in reality you do not listen. Because what does Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala say in Surah Al Imran? قُلْ إِن كُنْتُمْ تُحِبُّونَ اللَّهِ فَاتَّبِعُونِ يُحْبِبُكُمُ اللَّهِ وَيَغْفِرْ لَكُمْ ذُنُوبَكُمْ وَاللَّهُ غَفُورٌ رَّحِيمٌ Tell them, O Muhammad, that if they truly love Allah, إِن كُنْتُمْ تُحِبُّونَ اللَّهِ فَاتَّبِعُونِ If you truly love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then you will love the Prophet Muhammad sallam, and that love of the Prophet Muhammad sallam will be manifested truly in the way that you implement his command. And wallahi, my brother, my sister, when we implement the sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad sallam, the khair and the provisions and the blessings and the bounties come literally right to our doors. Literally right to our doors. Allah makes it easy. But when we dismiss and when we neglect and when we separate, subhanAllah, separate between the Quran and the sunnah, separate between the traditions of the Prophet Muhammad sallam and his command, and, and, and put them on a lower term, then we're only pushing ourselves further and further from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us from those who truly love the Prophet Muhammad sallam. We'll continue back after the break. Barakallahu feekum wa jazakumullahu khayra. لقد كان في قصصهم عبرة لأولي قصصهم عبرة لأولي الألباب. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف المرسلين. May the peace and blessings of Almighty Allah سبحانه وتعالى be with you. We continue and we're talking about the importance of uh, taking seriously the command of the Prophet Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم and not distinguishing between uh, uh, you know in, in terms of lowering. Uh, the, the, the command of the Prophet Muhammad Sallam and putting it on a dismissed uh, platform uh, when we're comparing it to the Quran. It is very critical that we love the Prophet Muhammad Sallam and we take that love very, very seriously because Wallahi, when you study the seerah and when you try to fully, fully understand the character of the Prophet Muhammad Sallam, you realize that Wallahi, he truly, truly loved us uh, from, from his heart and everything that he did was for subhanAllah our own good. And when we dismiss one part of the sunnah, it only leads to our own uh, fall and our own subhanAllah withdrawal from the straight path 
and our own displacement from the guidance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So my brother, my sister, let's look at another model, subhanAllah. And that is another battle, and that is the battle of Uhud, just to briefly shed light. We all know what happened with the 50 archers that were on the mountain. The Prophet Muhammad told them, stay on the mountain. If you see us falling, if you see us dying, if you see us running or going, regardless of what happens, stay on the mountain. That this was a clear command from the Prophet Muhammad stay on the mountain. Now what happened? As the Prophet Muhammad Sallam is in the middle of the battle, he's of course, the SubhanAllah, uh, in the battle of Uhud, the, 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 the people who have come to attack the Prophet Muhammad Sallam, they're pushed further and further and further back. And as they're pushed further and further back, the Muslims are uh, chasing them. And of course, when, when the, when the Mushrikeen or the people who have come to fight the Prophet Muhammad Sallam, uh, what they used to do, they used to actually carry with them all their goods, all their valuables, all their uh, swords and gold and whatnot. And the reason why they brought this stuff with them to the battlefield is because they did not want to leave the city uh, open and prone to attack. Imagine all the men from your city are going to fight. If they leave their valuables at home, uh, who's left to defend? Just the women and the children. So by leaving the valuables at home, then anybody can just come and take an opportunity or take advantage of the opportunity by... Um, you know, ransacking the city or stealing the resources that are present in that city. So the people of Quraysh and others, the Arab tribes, when they engaged in battle, they would bring the stuff with them. And so when the Quraysh's and, 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 and those who, uh, you know, uh, rallied up with them, when they would come to attack the Prophet Muhammad Sallam, they would bring the stuff with them. So in the battle of Uhud, uh, by the Mount of Uhud, on Jabal al rumah uh, you know, the, 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 the mountain of the archers, uh, because the Prophet Muhammad Sallam mounted the archers there, uh, what happened is the, 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 the Mushrikeen were dropping their valuables in, in an attempt to run. You know when you're fighting and when you're running for your life, when you're fleeing for your life, you don't care about anything. Anything that's holding you back, that's weighing you down, you throw. So now they're throwing all this stuff behind and as the Muslims are, are chasing them out of the city or out of the, you know, the, 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 the vicinity of the, the, the Uhud uh, mountain, uh, they're very excited because they're dropping all this stuff. The Mushrikeen, the, the, the enemy is dropping all this stuff. And the Muslims are getting excited because they're subhanAllah collecting it and they know that this is going to be uh, something that they will be able to keep. And of course, some people get, you know, some people get excited when they uh, you know, possess something mater materialistically, a gift or gold or something valuable. Even till this day, uh, people are excited when something unexpected uh, comes your way that is very valuable and very worthy. And so here what happens, listen, th listen to this carefully. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala of course taught the Muslims a very important lesson here again about obedience to the Prophet Muhammad when the, when the guys on the archers, when the Prophet Muhammad told them stay regardless of what happens, when they saw the gold being taken, everything being taken and consumed by these guys that were on the ground, they were like, what about us? What about us? And they started to come down from the mountain. And what happened, Khalid ibn Walid was staying in a corner the whole time. The whole battle, he was eyeing the mountain, waiting for an opportunity. And as soon as he saw the archers come down, now he could come back from behind and he attacked the Muslims. And a great, great casualty, uh, subhanAllah, a great suffering the Muslims went through. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, it was an injury, it was an injury, qarh. It was an injury that affected and afflicted the Muslims. Now the Muslims said, hold on a second, the Prophet Muhammad told us we're going to win this battle. Allah promised that we're going to be victorious. Allah promised that... No, 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 Allah did promise, but what changed? Let's read this ayah together. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, A'udhu billahi min shaitan rajeem وَلَقَدْ صَدَقَكُمُ اللَّهُ وَعْدَهُ إِذْ تَحُسُّونَهُمْ بِإِذْنِهِ حَتَّى إِذَا فَشِلْتُمْ وَتَنَازَعَتُمْ فِي الْأَمْرِ وَعَصَيْتُمْ وَعَصَيْتُمْ مِنْ بَعْدِ مَا أَرَاكُمْ مَا تُحِبُّونَ مِنْكُمْ مَنْ يُرِيدُ الدُّنْيَا وَمِنْكُمْ مَنْ يُرِيدُ الْآخِرَةِ ثُمَّ صَرَفَكُمْ عَنْهُمْ لِيَبْتَلِيَكُمْ وَلَقَدْ عَفَا عَنْكُمْ وَاللَّهُ ذُو فَضْلٍ عَلَى الْمُؤْمِنِينَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Indeed, He did fulfill His promise to you. He did fulfill His promise to you. When you were there, when you were uh, you know, fighting in the middle of the battle, when you were confronting them in the battle, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did fulfill and He did complete His promise to you. 
and it was everything was going your way until what happened فشلتم وتنازعتم في الأمر وعصيتم من بعد ما أراكم ما تحبون until you begun to basically lose determination until you begun to uh, look down uh, on, on, on the others and you begin to feel hold on a second why them why not us why are we here how come how come them how come not? so they begun to basically envy the people who got some of subhanallah of the leftovers and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says وعصيتم and you disobeyed the command of Allah من بعد ما أراكم ما تحبون when he showed you what you truly love then he basically began to break the command of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam I want you to imagine this very very clearly and very very importantly sometimes Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala will put right in front of us the things that we love the things that our heart is attached to you know subhanAllah it could be wealth it could be a fitna of, of many kinds and the question that you have to ask yourself is are you going to let that love for that thing distract you away from the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam's command or are you going to maintain and hold on to the Sunnah imagine when Allah showed them what they love what should they have done the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was very clear he told us to stay back and stay away from that but they didn't, subhanAllah, they succumbed to the love of the dunya. And that's what happens, my brother, my sister. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will sometimes open channels for us. And those channels can sometimes, subhanAllah, lead to, uh, to, to, to us really losing track of what is important, what is a priority. And here, the battle of the Uhud, was it a loss? Was it a win for the Muslims? You know what? Wallahi subhanAllah, it was actually a great victory for the Muslims. Because they may have suffered casualties, they may have suffered numbers, they may have suffered subhanAllah, uh, or, or some people may have uh, been martyred, and, and, and alhamdulillah they're in a great uh, position, alhamdulillah with Allah, but the people who were left behind were grieving for them, but they learned a very important lesson. And that lesson was, whatever the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi teaches you, whatever the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi says, you will listen to, you will obey. And anything that you break, it will eventually lead to your own breaking as well, my brother, my sister. And we have to really, really implement that in the time that we live in today. What do you really, really love? Are you going to be distracted by the dunya and in an expense or at, at the expense of, of your relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, at the expense with the loving relationship that you have to establish with the Prophet Muhammad sallam by implementing what he, what he has taught us? My brother, my sister, we all have to make that decision and we all have to make that choice in our lives. And just a very important, uh, subhanAllah, uh, you know, uh, uh, component to this is even the Prophet Muhammad sallam with his own family, they had to make that choice. Right after the battle of the Ahzab, we talked about the battle of the Ahzab, we talked about how all the, you know, parties collected and grouped together and tried to fight the city of Medina. Right after the battle of the Ahzab, of course, many, many uh, victories and many, many openings came and Muslims began to be very, very powerful. And many, subhanAllah, Muslims began to have a lot of resources and access to resources. And now the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu own family, what they did is they came to the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu and they told him, Ya Rasulullah, all the other companions and everybody else in the city of Medina is now benefiting from the abundance of resources. Everybody's now living in better houses, having you know, access to better things. And the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi family, their own, his own household, his own wife, his own uh, you know, family, they came to him and said, Ya Rasulullah, what about us? We need, to, you know, we need upward mobility too. We need to, to get a share of this, uh, you know, the success. Everybody else is getting it. So Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala says to the Prophet Muhammad, Muhammad and listen to these ayat carefully my brother my sister when they asked for money what did Allah say Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says A'udhu billahi minash shaitanir rajeem Ya ayyuhan nabiyyu qul li azwajika in kuntunna turidna alhayata ad-dunya wa zinataha wa zinataha fata'alayn إن كنتن تردن الحياة الدنيا وزينتها فتعالين فتعالين أمتعكن وأسرحكن سراحا جميلا وإن كنتن تردن الله ورسوله والدار الآخرة والدار الآخرة فإن الله أعد فإن الله أعد للمحسنات منكن فإن الله أعد للمحسنات منكن أجرا عظيما. الله سبحانه وتعالى told the prophet Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم, O messenger of Allah, يا أيها النبي, O prophet, tell your wives, tell them. That if you truly want the dunya and its pleasures, if you want this lower world and its pleasures, then come, let me know, and I will give you all of the things that you want. But then you go your way and I'll go my way. 
because I have, the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu says, I have a specific focus and a specific goal, and that is the goal of attaining the pleasure of Allah. And the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu did not want anything of this dunya and wanted his mind to be focused completely on the akhirah, on the hereafter. And so he gave them the choice. If they wanted the pleasures of this dunya, they could get it and he would give them. I will, I will give you the pleasures and I will let you go in a very, very simple and in a very uh, you know, beautiful manner. But if you want Allah, in kuntunna turidin Allah, وَرَسُولَهُ وَالدَّارَ الْآخِرَةِ فَإِنَّ اللَّهَ أَعَدَّ لِلْمُحْسِنَاتِ مِنْ كُنَّ أَجْرًا عَظِيمًا If you truly want Allah and His Messenger and you want the here attached to and if you love the Prophet Muhammad Sallam then implement his Sunnah. جزاكم الله خير والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته لقد كان في قصصهم عبرة لأولي الألباب ما كان حديثا يفترى ولكن تصديق الذي بين يديه وتفصيل كل شيء وهدى ورحمة لقوم